Welcome to the complete beginner's guide to Formula One, which I've compressed down into different videos. But this video is all about safety. What are those flags? What happens during a safety car? Well, let's find out. Safety is paramount in Formula One, and to help the drivers remain safe, there are numerous flags that are shown to indicate potential issues on the track. And I'm gonna cover the most common ones, starting with the green flag. It's shown at the start of every session to let drivers know that the action has started but also shown after any yellow flag to let the drivers know that the hazard has passed and they're now allowed to resume racing. Probably the most common flag though is the yellow one, and this comes in two forms, the single yellow flag and the double yellow flag. The single yellow means there is a danger ahead and overtaking is prohibited. You have to reduce your speed. A double waved yellow on the other hand is the same, but more extreme. This means that the incident was likely worse or perhaps marshals are in danger and you must reduce your speed significantly and even be prepared to stop. If there is a yellow flag or a double yellow flag and you are shown not to be significantly slowing down, you could be in serious trouble. When an incident can't be controlled by yellow flags though, or even a safety car, which I will cover shortly, the red flag is shown. This means the race stops entirely and the cars all have to make their way back round to the pits and stop at the beginning of the pit lane in a line. When the race restarts, it could be either a rolling start or a standing start, depending on the race director's decision. Some races have been red flagged numerous times, leading to three standing starts in one race. In fact, that just happened at the Australian Grand Prix. It's not common, but certainly red flags are more common now than they used to be. The blue flag is one that most drivers don't want to see, as it's waved when you're about to be lapped, and it's telling you there's a faster car behind and you have to let them through. It's down to the car ahead to let the driver behind through in a safe manner, but pass three consecutive flags without yielding, and you could be in for a penalty. The white flag is shown when there is a slow moving vehicle on the track or maybe another vehicle such as the medical car might be out on track. It's designed just to let the drivers know that they may need to slow down further and take avoiding action when needed. White flags are often waved on the pit straight and at the end of practice sessions right before the drivers do their practice starts. The black and white flag is for any driver who is deemed to have done something unsportsmanlike and it serves as a warning. If a driver continues to do something that is deemed illegal or unfair, they will get the full black flag. And this means you are disqualified and you must return to the pits immediately. Those flags, though, are very rare. There is also a black flag with an orange circle, which indicates that the car has some sort of issue, which could be mechanical, that they need to address. Maybe they've got a front wing hanging off, maybe they're dropping oil, and they have to come back to the pits to fix it. There is one flag that you've probably never seen, and I don't really remember the last time I saw it, if at all. And it's the red and yellow striped flag. It's only used when a track could be slippery from oil or debris, but with the age of radios, safety cars, virtual safety cars, yellow flags, it's not really used anymore. The last flag you should absolutely be aware of is, of course, the checkered flag, which is black and white. This is shown at the end of every session to indicate the end of that session, and of course is shown on the final lap of the race as the cars cross the finish line. Once the checkered flag drops in qualifying and practice, drivers are no longer allowed to start new laps, but they can complete the laps they are already on. Just one more thing on flags. There are marshals that wave physical flags, but there are also digital LED boards that feature at various points around the circuit, and they also indicate if a flag is active in that sector. Drivers also have indicators on their steering wheel, and despite all of this, they are still easily missed when you're doing 200 miles an hour. Let's now just touch on the safety car and virtual safety car. The safety car is fairly straightforward. If the race director deems an incident on track to be bad enough and the racing needs to be neutralized, maybe due to marshals needing to retrieve a car or a barrier that might be in need of repair, the safety car can be deployed. The safety car then leaves the pit lane and waits to pick up the leader of the race, who at this point will already be slowing down as the drivers are informed that the safety car has been deployed. Once this has happened, no overtaking can be done, unless of course a car is stopping or slowing down due to a mechanical issue. At this point, the safety car controls the race and all cars must remain in order behind it. When it's safe and before the restart of the race, the race director will instruct any lapped cars to overtake all of the cars, including the safety car, and make their way around the track. This is to clear them from the snake and basically unlap themselves. When the lights go out on the safety car, it means it's coming in that lap. And when it does so, it's up to the lead car to then control the race. The lead car needs to choose the right time to go while ensuring they don't go too soon. Each circuit has a certain safety car line that drivers cannot overtake before. Also, DRS is not enabled for a full two laps after a safety car period. There are actually two safety cars currently in use in Formula 1. One is a Mercedes-Benz AMG, and the other is an Aston Martin Vantage. They kind of flip-flop between circuits. 
Bert Maylander is a name you also may recognize. He is a German racing driver and is the current safety car driver for Formula One and has been for a very long time. The virtual safety car was a system brought in to neutralize a race without drivers losing advantages they had built up. Instead of a physical safety car, the drivers are instructed to adhere to a certain lap delta shown on their steering wheel. Every race will have a different delta, but as a rule, the lap time they'll be aiming for would be roughly 30% slower than a normal racing lap. The driver then needs to control their pace, keeping to a delta that's given to them on their steering wheel to ensure they're not going too fast or too slow. You don't want to be losing time. Then when the virtual safety car ends, they are able to instantly get back up to racing speed. Should they go over their delta though, which means they've been going too fast, they could be in for a penalty. DRS is also available instantly after a virtual safety car, compared to a two lap delay for an actual safety car. The race director can decide if a situation needs a full safety car, a virtual safety car, or in some instances, a full red flag. You will often also hear engineers speaking to their drivers about a safety car window. What's that all about? Well, sometimes teams either expect for a safety car, if a track has one quite often, or they just want to wait until a certain point to ensure they don't miss that window. Remember, if a driver stops during an active race, they could lose maybe 20 to 25 seconds in the pit lane, depending on the circuit. If a safety car comes out though and they're able to stop, well, they're going to save themselves a lot of time. And drivers who don't pit are going to lose out massively. Even a stop under the virtual safety car saves a lot of time. And that's it for safety. Next time around, we're going to be looking at the rules of Formula One. And there's a lot of rules. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.